Alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulullah. As we know, we completed Surah Al-Adiyat last night. Uh, surah, uh, the whole Juz Amma last night. And part of that is Surah Al-Adiyat, which I want to talk about. It's a very short surah, but it's, but it's a very powerful surah in the message that it gives us. And uh, if I was to say that it was one of my favorite short surahs, I, that would not be um, uh, an exaggeration because of the message that it actually gives. So, what this surah is talking about is horses. Horses and, you know, sometimes you say you have this, uh, there's a saying that a picture tells a thousand words. Sometimes words are described in the Quran that are so vivid that it just becomes like a picture. And the way that these ayat describe the horses it really puts you right in the middle of the action, as they say. So if you pay attention and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes those horses and how he takes an oath by them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I swear by those horses which are running and dhabhan, it has two meanings. Dhabhan, swiftly, and it can also mean and while running, they make the sound of snorting. The the sound that a horse makes, panting sound, or the sound that comes from a chest as it runs out of breath. So this is an oath that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes by these horse, horses that are running so swiftly, that are running so fast, that they are completely out of breath and they are snorting and making this heavy sound coming from their chest and from their mouth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking an oath by these horses. فَالْمُورِيَاتِ قَدْحَ And in the course of their running, when their hooves are hitting the rocks, what's happening is that when these hooves hit the rocks, the sparks fly out of the hooves. Sparks fly out of the rocks. So if you have a flint rock and it, it is hit by metal, what happens? Sparks fly out. So these horses, they're running fast, swiftly, and they are breathing very heavily. And when their hooves are hitting the rocks, sparks are flying out of these rocks because of the uh, ferocity of the way that they are hitting the rocks with such, with such, uh, you know, with, with such pace and with such force. فَالْمُغِيرَاتِ <laughs> subha. And these same horses, they attack the enemy early in the morning. فَالْمُغِيرَاتِ subha. This is something that the Arabs were very famous for, that they didn't like to attack at night. Because they used to think that, an, the, that a coward is a person who attacks at night while his enemy is sleeping. So they used to attack in the morning, in full broad daylight, while the enemy is waiting for them and prepared for them so that there's an actual fight. Not just attacking and sneaking up like they do in this day and age with missiles from far away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the whole ummah from the situations that they are facing nowadays. So, فَالْمُغِيرَاتِ subha, They attack in the morning, early. So these horses, again, three ayat now, they are running swiftly, breathing heavily, Sparks are flying out of the hooves as they are hitting the rocks and they are attacking early in the morning. فَأَثَرُنَا بِهِ نَقْعَ And as they are attacking the forces, the, the dust is flying around, around them. So when their hooves are hitting the sandy areas, then the dust is flying around them also. The dust, because of the hooves, it becomes all around them. So the if you put the, uh, the ayah before it together with this one, it really gives another meaning. Why? Because early in the morning, there is dew in the grass and in the sand, there's moisture. So if the hooves are hitting the sand when it's moist, it's not supposed to fly around in a dusty way. But despite the dust being moist, the horses, when they hit, this uh, gr ground with such severity, 
it even makes dust at that time it shows the force that the horses are actually exerting while running and attacking the enemy okay so they when they hit the ground the dust is flying all around them and when the master tells them to get into the thick of the enemy right into the middle of the enemy these horses they dive into this force the opposing force of the enemy and they don't they don't flinch for a second they go right in the middle of this jama'ah this group this congregation and this opposing army so this is the description of horses okay very vivid and i'm sure that the way it's being described it's really created a picture in your mind as to what these horses are doing and how brave they are and how uh, they are listening to their master and actually just uh, willing to do everything for their master and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then brings what is known as Jawab al-Qasim and we've mentioned earlier in the month what is Qasim and what is Jawab al-Qasim so these six ayat before or these five ayat before these were combined they become the Qasim the oath that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes by those horses and then the Jawab al-Qasim is this ayah inna al-insana li rabbihi lakanud indeed the human being towards his Lord he is very ungrateful Okay, what's the connection between the two? What's the connection between horses and the slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The connection is that look at this horse. He is so obedient to his master that whatever the master tells him, tells him to run, he runs. Despite being tired, despite being exhausted, he will continue to run. He will continue to run. He will continue to run even if he falls and he is about to fall unconscious, he will continue running until that time. And then on top of that, when the master tells him to climb over rocks, he will climb over rocks. When the master tells him to go over the sand, it will go over the sand. And when the master tells him to go deep into the thick of the enemy forces, the horse will not stop. It will go inside the enemy forces without any care for what's going to happen to it. Now compare that to the slave of Allah and how he is disobedient to his master who provides for him and gives to him at all times. How are we compared to that horse? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants very little from us. He wants, you know, he demands very little from us yet we are so disobedient to him that we cannot even do the little that he wants us to do for him. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that compared to this horse that is so obedient to his master, indeed the human being towards his own master, towards his Lord, he is lakanud, he is so ungrateful. And then on top of that, وَإِنَّهُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ لَشَهِيد This can have two meanings, either that he himself is a witness to it. Okay, we need to just think about ourselves and self-reflect for a minute how disobedient we are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how far short we fall to his commands and to his expectations from us okay so this is one meaning and the other meaning can be that Allah himself he is a witness to this Allah is witnessing that how ungrateful the slave uh, his own slave is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَإِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَشَدِيدٍ and indeed he this human being is in the love of wealth, he is very severe. Al-Khair, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described wealth as Al-Khair. And this is one of the things that Allah does not describe wealth as being evil per se. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the wealth throughout the Quran with good names. Al-Fadl, for example. Here, Al-Khair. Okay, so the wealth is a good thing with certain conditions. Number one, it has to be earned in a halal way. It has to be spent in a halal way. And the rights of that wealth have to be fulfilled. Okay, then and only then is wealth good. But if it's been earned in a haram way, or if it's been spent in haram things, and then the right of the wealth in the fulfillment of the zakat and giving in charity is not fulfilled, 
then that wealth is not khair anymore. So this is the difference between good wealth and bad wealth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here that the human, he is very severely in love with this khair. He loves the wealth so much that everything else becomes secondary when it comes to wealth and money. أَفَلَا يَعْلَمُ إِذَا بُعْثِرَ مَا فِي الْقُبُورِ وَحُصِّلَ مَا فِي الصُّدُورِ إِنَّ رَبَّهُمْ بِهِمْ يَوْمَ إِذِ اللَّ خَبِيرٌ Does he not know that when whatever is in the graves is resurrected and whatever is attained from the chests is extracted from the chests that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be fully aware of on that day of what's with them. In Rabbahum Bihim Yawma Idilla Khabir. So these three sentences basically sum up what is going to happen to the human that basically will be resurrected and then on, on the day of judgment it is not our tongues that will do the talking. We may claim something, we may claim to be good Muslims, we may claim to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but what is going to be extracted is what is in our hearts, which I mentioned earlier in the month. اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمون أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم. Okay, the mouths are going to be closed up and the rest of the body is going to testify. The heart is going to testify whether there's any iman there or not. So on that day of judgment, whatever is in the chests will be extracted. So what we have to do is the summary of the surah basically is that we need to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa taala. We need to not uh, fill our hearts with uh, wealth so much, with the love of wealth so much, that we, f we don't leave any room for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our hearts. Because ultimately, if that love of wealth is the only thing that we take into the grave with us, then we're going to be in trouble on the Day of Judgment. We need to fill our hearts with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that on the Day of Judgment, when our hearts are opened up, and whatever is extracted from our hearts, there is something that we can present to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Oh Allah, this is what I had in my heart for you. This is what I believed. This was my conviction. Accept it from me. This is the effort that we need to make. And in trying to do that, just think about these horses. These dumb animals that are just so obedient to their master that whatever the master says, they are there at the bidding and they do whatever the master tells them to do. We should have that same attitude towards trying to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what the surah is about and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us tawfiq to understand and practice what is being said and heard. <laughs> Now